All right, thanks for watching. And today we're gonna get real and talk about the real numbers. And just like we did for the natural numbers, we're gonna take an axiomatic approach. In other words, what are the properties that make the real numbers so special? And one thing that distinguishes the real numbers from its cousins, the integers or the natural numbers, is that the real numbers form a field, which is just a system where you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. And so here's a definition. A field, F, so press F to speak, pay respects, okay? It's just a set equipped with operations basically equipped with addition and multiplication plus and times okay such that the following properties are true I will write a lot of properties, so just bear with me, but I'm hoping that the next ones are pretty obvious to you. And by the way, if I write A, B, and C, it's just arbitrary elements in the field. So A, B, C, R, and M. First of all, so there are the addition axioms. We'll see there are addition axioms and multiplication axioms. First of all, a field is closed under addition. And all that this means is, if you take two elements in your field and you add them, they're still in your field. So, first of all, I think A0, AB is an F, implies A plus B is an F. Just like for vector spaces if you want. Then the next one, it's called um, associativity, which basically means parentheses don't matter. So all this means is A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C. Again, associativity. And then there's commutativity which just means a plus b equals b plus a. So the order of operations in some sense doesn't matter. And then, then there's a zero element. So what's the zero? What does the zero element do? All it does is if you add it to anything, you get the same thing. So there is... some element zero in F such that A plus zero equals zero plus A equals A. So it doesn't do anything again, but it's so very important, interestingly. And then basically you can subtract things. In other words, for every A, every A and F, there is something called minus A in F, so kind of the antidote to whatever A is, uh, such that, in other words, if you add, in other words, if you subtract A from A, you get zero. So A plus minus A equals minus A plus a equals zero. So that's what's called an additive inter inverse, not addictive inverse. And mm, so far, again, those are the axioms for addition. And if you know some algebra, this just means f is a group, a abelian group under uh, addition. And next come all the axioms for multiplication.
so first of all, again, A, B, and C, they're in, um, what's called, uh, the field. And just like before, first of all, um, fields are closer under multiplication. So in other words, A, B, and F implies their product is still in F. And then, again, order doesn't matter. So A, B times C, it's A times B times C. So that's called associativity. And then commutativity, so A, B is B, A. And then, um, before we had the zero element, which did nothing, now we have a one element, so there is an element one. One in F, okay, such that again, A times one equals one times A equals A, for all A, in other words, one does nothing but multiplication wise, and last but not least, there's something called one over A, but again, be careful, so even for real numbers, uh, one over zero doesn't exist, so in other words, we require A to be non-zero, so for all in other words, for any non-zero number in the field, 1 over A exists. So for all A non-zero, there is A inverse in F such that, well, what is 1 over A? It just means if you multiply it by A, you get 1. So A, A inverse equals A inverse A equals one. Okay. Very good, and we're not quite done, we're almost done. So those are the multiplication axioms. And last but not least, the question is, how does addition deal with multiplication? So is there an axiom for both of them together? Yes, it's called distributivity. In other words, so distributive law, so not down low, but for every a, b, and c, a times b plus c equals a, b plus a, c. And again, this tells you how addition and multiplication act together. So this is a field, there are all the axioms. I know there are a lot of them, but I hope they seem kind of obvious to you, so nothing uh, what the idea is really we want to mimic uh, what the real numbers are, so that's really important. And by the way, if you like that kind of thing, I, I urge you to take algebra. I think there's Math 120B in uh, UC Irvine that deals with uh, those kind of things. Okay, and then the question is, well, what are examples of fields? Well, of course, the real numbers. Uh, because again, the point of today is the real numbers, but also the rational numbers. So unfortunately, rational numbers are also a field. So it's not what makes R special, but also the complex numbers, I, right? And lastly, you might think fields are very big, but they don't have to be. There's also just a set zero comma one, that's a field, as long as you define one plus one equals zero. A two element field. But of course, what's a non example? Well, the, the natural numbers. And why is this not a field? Because, for instance, 2 is in n, but the additive inverse is not in n. Or also uh, the integers themselves, because, for instance, 3 is in z, but three inverse, which is one third, is not in Z. So already you can see the fact that R is a field really distinguishes R from its cousins, the natural numbers and the integers. And 
And the nice thing is from that we can prove some nice facts about fields and the next seven minutes or so I will uh, prove a couple of them. So here, again, the following are true for any field. So, and again, A, B, and C are elements in the field. So first of all, A plus C, there's a cancellation law. A plus C equals B plus C implies A equals B. And why not? Let me prove this right away. So proof. proof. So consider, start with A plus C equals B plus C. Well, and add minus C there. Because we know minus C exists by uh, one of the laws, the additive inverse law, but then by associativity, we get B plus C plus minus C. Okay. Again, that's associativity. But then by additive inverse, we know c minus c is 0. So a plus 0 equals b plus 0. Okay, It's basically the definition of minus c. And last but not least, by definition of 0, we get a equals b. Very good. And then um, similarly, we can get another cancellation law, namely the uh, multiplicative cancellation law. Namely, if A is not equal to zero, then, in other words, AB equals AC implies B equals C. Okay, and I can do similarly, you just multiply by A inverse. But what's more interesting is the following thing, because again, remember what zero, how zero is defined. It's the number such, when you add a to zero, you get a. But interestingly, uh, zero also has an interesting multiplicative property, because it turns out that if you multiply a by zero, you get zero. Again, not obvious. It's the stuff that you've ingrained in your mind, but uh, we haven't really shown this. And how does that work? It's quite interesting. Because, well, first of all, by definition of zero, what happens if you add nothing to zero? Well, you get zero. Okay, so first... We have 0 plus 0 equals 0. That's by definition of 0. And we'll need this in a second. But consider the following element. And that's kind of interesting. So consider the following. 0 plus <coughs> a0. <coughs> Sorry. Um, 0 plus a0. Well, on the one hand, by definition of 0, that gives you a0. But now remember, zero is just zero plus zero. I know, yo dog, it's very confusing. But the point is then, a times zero is a of zero plus zero. But then by distributive law, so by the down low, that gives you a zero plus a zero. So what do we have? We have zero, plus a0 equals a0 plus a0, okay. like that. But now we can just cancel out a0. Remember, we proved the cancellation law just now, and we get a0 equals 0. Neat. OK, then that's by 1. Okay, and then you can also uh, have other things. So, for instance, um, again, how does addition and multiplication behave? So, we also have mm, 
again, if you multiply the additive inverse of a by b, it's like taking the additive inverse of a, b. So it's very subtle, but um, not obvious, again. But how do you do that? So basically, you want to show, in other words, that if you add this and this, you get zero. So notice, take minus AB plus AB. Okay. And then by the distributive law, and if you're commutativity, okay, if you want, uh, uh, that's B times minus A plus BA, in case you're pedantic. And by the distributive law, that's B times minus A plus A. And then by definition of minus A, that's zero. And by just what we've just shown, that is just zero. So, so that's, I think, by three. But what does that mean? It means that if you um, add AB to minus AB, sorry, if you add B to, um, or in other words, what does that mean? Sorry, if you add, minus a b to a b you get zero but then by definition of additive inverse so by definition of minus a b this means that the additive inverse of a b is a minus a b again that's by definition of minus a b All right, very good, and then, um, again, quite technical point. And of course, similarly, you can show uh, uh, something like that, minus A times minus B, if you just apply it twice, you get AB. And, and last but not least, you can also show that AB equals zero implies uh, a equals zero or b equals zero. So this is sometimes what's called an integral domain. And the way you show it is as follows. So suppose a, b equals zero, but a is not zero. Well, then what you can do, you can take a, b equals zero, and multiply by A inverse. So A inverse, AB equals A inverse zero. But then that's just one B by definition of A inverse. And then A inverse zero is just zero. And then lastly, we get B equals zero which is just what you wanted to show. All right, and again, those are the, um, yeah, those are all the field axioms. So if you want, you know, if you like this and you want to know more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.